What's up, y'all? First of all, I want to say a rest in heaven to my Uncle Sammy. He passed away on October the 30th. Um, He was 67 years old. He was definitely one of the coolest guys I know. So definitely my coolest uncle by far. Best dressed, always matching, like ladies' man. Um, I said the other day he was here for a good time, not a long time, um, but he was in a lot of pain and, you know, be him being the cool man that he was in this life. I know he wouldn't want to be laid up in a hospital bed. He'd be out being dressed to the nines, you know, smelling good, looking good, jewelry, you know, he was, I mean, he was one of the best dressed people in my family, if not the best. But, um, yeah, rest in peace to my Uncle Sam. Love you so much. And I'm going to play a song for him. wanted to play something from their era um you know you lose touch with family uh but anytime I saw my uncle was all of and that's kind of how I am with everybody in my life you know I think it's always amazing sometimes when we come to a point where we be in our life and you probably think nobody cares or thinks about you but salute Uncle Sam I care and think about you and all those people that I really don't talk to every day like one thing about me if I never had a problem with you when you go I'm gonna salute you um, because life is hard and it is so short y'all it goes so fast so hold on to the ones that you love and yeah you know keep everybody else keep pushing because it goes fast he was only 67 and that is so young but like i said i can't think of one time where he went and flossing and living his best materialistic life i just hope that in the end he which i think that he did definitely uh speak to god and and you know transition in the right way and I know that my grandmother was a praying woman. So I know that I, I know her being the woman she was. And she was definitely uh, waiting on him on the other side. So, you know, shout out to everybody that's losing loved ones around the holiday season. It's rough. And um, shout out to everybody that's lost people. But guess what? We're still here. And so we have to do it for them. We have to smile for them. We have to laugh for them. We have to be present for them, and you know, uh, and I, and one thing I hate, I hate when your family gets together for stuff like this. I try to do a better job, but I'm, you know, times like this it makes you remember that you work too much and you don't spend enough time with the people that you love. But you know, it's all good. You know, we keep going. I hate to transition into news, but the news I do have is that I won my fantasy football this week all off of some freaking field goal kicks, but I'll take it. Uh, The Detroit Lions and the Raiders played today, and yeah, I won that, so I think I think I've won like twice this whole fantasy. My husband told me he was proud of me because I have not dropped out. I want to. I just don't feel like hearing his mouth. You know what I'm saying? 
And this is what I got to say to my husband. You bring me joy. And my mama, and my friends, and my family, and my sisters, and my brothers. You bring me joy, y'all. I love y'all. I had a, a, a fun time with my bestie the other day and her family and... I'm feeling love all around. That's what we should be spreading. I'm acting like a whole DJ right now. But anyway, let's get into this news, y'all. Let's see what we got. How can you deny Anita Baker? One of the best. One of the best to do it. Let's see what we got here. You bring me joy. So there was some. Uh, Suge Knight said that Akon raped a 13 year old. Um, not understanding why he said that. I got, you know, oh, so Suge Knight starting a podcast for prison. That's right. Uh, he ain't got nothing else to do in there. So he started a. It's called the Collect Call podcast from prison last week. And during one of the episodes, Knight claimed that Akon and his longtime collaborator uh, were involved in a sexual assault case concerning a 13-year-old sibling of one of Knight's associates as well as her 12-year-old friend. I wasn't going to bring it up, Knight said, but one of my homegirls, she was a hustler. She had a little sister 13 years old and her best friend was 12. She's in a car with him, you know, and... She said, I got my little sister and her best friend with me. I said, well, then stop by for a second. She goes to your hotel room in your room and she gets the call. It was dudes she met at the hotel and when she was coming to see you in Mappers. He added, they look scared and they're crying. And when she gets back from the car with them, they tell her, Akon F this little 13-year-old and detail whoever... The other friend had sex with the 12 year old and he was like, y'all raped him. So when she told him, I pulled up on her and she said, she's going to the police to put the MF in jail for rape. I said, nah, we don't do that telling to the police. I'll deal with it. I promise you that. So I was trying to catch you MFers about that situation. Um, but you didn't catch him, Suge Knight, yet you're on a podcast talking about it now. Days later, Akon took to Twitter to deny Knight's allegations. He said, the world knows a lie when they hear it, he wrote. It's unfortunate that this man is going out like this. It's sad and seriously embarrassing. Um, Akon better be careful, though, because she's going to be out soon. Some a lot of people in the comments are saying, I absolutely believe Shug. You have nothing to gain by randomly lying on Akon. Um, somebody said, You can't tell us who killed Tupac, but you can tell this. Somebody said, That lie sure do got a lot of details attached to it. Yeah, I do. But I'm just saying, Shug, you never caught him, though. That's all I'm saying. Domino's is offering customers with student loans free pizza. Kimmy Cakes is making more moves with her skims. She's named as the official underwear partner for NBA and WNBA and USA Basketball. So you can wear your skims underneath. Um, let's see what else we got here, y'all. Ohio woman faces four murder charges accused of drugging and robbing men. If y'all would have seen this lady and them dudes went with her, they probably had it, had it coming because that girl is going, that girl looked like she went through it in life. Let's see. Matthew Perry's friends, people are very upset about his drowning. They haven't um, released the toxicology report yet. 
If you had fifty thousand in your account right now, what would you do with it? Fifty K. I mean, I pay some bills, but I just party with that because fifty K is not a lot of money right now. Some people are saying pay off some medical bills. Have it sitting there in case of emergencies. Buy half a tank of gas. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'd pay off bills for real with it because y'all can just keep making that payments. Y'all can pad y'all savings up. You know, pay off a few little crappy bills. But nah, I wouldn't pay no big bills with that. Zoe Kravitz and Channing Tatum are reportedly engaged. Very odd couple, but it seems like Channing Tatum should be with a black girl. He's got that swag ever since Magic Mike. Um, they started dating in 2021, which Zoe was just married to somebody. So she kind of like got in that relationship pretty fast. I kind of thought it was a fling, but I guess not. But yeah, they were spotted out and she had a ring in her on her finger. They met during her casting for the P.U.S.S.Y. Island, a movie where Kravitz made her directional debut and Tatum starred. Um, yeah. John Legend opens up about how limiting his social media has improved his mental health. It was just a lot. Let's settle this once and for all. Does egg go in macaroni and cheese? I've never had it. A lot of people say it don't make a difference. Eggs is too hot to even play these games. So i just going to continue my life without eggs in my mac and cheese. But that's just me. All right. Here y'all go. I just had to do a little music because guess what I like that song um the Texas Rangers take game three in the World Series they're nine and oh on the road in the postseason I kind of want the Diamondbacks to win just because I just don't like Texas I just I'm not a fan of Texas at all let's see what else is going on Oh, I didn't say what I did today. I went to the gym today, and I made chili this weekend, so I had chili, and then my husband made some really good rice, so I made me some chili nachos or some rice. It was, it was slapping. It was good. I went to the gym, sat in the sauna, and everybody in the sauna decided to have a conversation set it, session, and I hate when people talk in the sauna. It drives me insane. I kept covering my face because I, I know my facial expressions was off the chain. But they were just talking about the dumbest conversation, too, about concrete. Concrete finishing. Like, it was driving me mad. This is why, man. I need my own sauna. I used to have it, but... It went away. It went on the wayside. Uh, let's see what else we got going on. Mm. I like 
like it. I really, really like it. I want it. Let's see what else is going on in the news. They're still calling for a ceasefire over in Israel, but I think Israel's closing in on releasing the hostages, so they're not about to cease fire. Um, it's unfortunate because a lot of lives lost, especially children's lives, but the Israeli Prime Minister vows no ceasefire as the incursion into Gaza, Gaza intensifies, so yeah, they're not doing that. Hurricane Otis leaves nearly 100 people dead or missing in Mexico. See what else we got here. The housing market is headed back to a 1980s style recession, Wells Fargo says, and it's all because of higher for longer mortgage rates. Robert De Niro is on the trial of his ex-assistant and they said he lost his temper during the trial. And Bridgerton star says that Netflix did nothing when she had two psychotic breaks. That's wild. Ex-California mom charged with hosting parties with alcohol for teens and encouraging sexual assault. How is she an ex-mom is my question. What happened? They're saying the new GOP House Speaker is worse than Jim Jordan. Interesting. The new Apple MacBook Pro is coming out if you guys are into that kind of stuff. There's a lot of eyedrop products that are the FDA is warning against. There's like 20 sticks of them, so you guys need to go look that up just in case. All right, let's get into these. Reddits. Let's see what we got. All right. What are some things that happened to you during pregnancy and birth that no one told you about? A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff happened. Um, I was the first person in my family to have a C-section, so a lot of people really didn't know how to treat those. Um, I kind of happened upon, like, well, you get hemorrhoids when you get a C-section. That's just fact, because they cut your stomach muscles. So one thing that I use for hemorrhoids is gold bond powder. It is the, a lifesaver. And... There's just a million things, like when your baby's about to be due, the bottom part of your stomach gets really soft and squishy. It's, you go from having this hard, firm stomach, and then when the baby starts dropping, your bo- your stomach just starts doing some really, st- your whole body just starts doing some crazy changes. But let's see what else. No one told me about my baby literally taking all my nutrients. Yes, babies can that's the importance of those prenatal vitamins back in the day they said women would lose their teeth on babies because of that morning sickness can start at any time if you have retained placenta 
the obstetrician will literally fish you to remove it pregnancy can give you gallstones your hair can fall out a lot i lost a ton of hair in the hairline the heightened senses don't necessarily go away postpartum bleeding smells nothing like you've ever smelled before nobody warned me that i would be pressured on pressed on like the pillsbury doughboy yeah once you have your c-section too they press on your stomach which is very painful so you don't get gas c-sections are the worst man but yeah it is not a fun time i mean it's worth it but it's just not fun that's why i only have two kids because i did not enjoy being pregnant let's see what else to straight women how do you feel if your friend comes out as a lesbian <laughs> I know my friend isn't but um, I mean I mean, good luck to you because I wouldn't want to be in a, with a woman like women are too needy and mean and petty. I mean, you know, I wouldn't want to be with me. I wouldn't want to be with a woman, but that's just me. Uh, somebody said, I don't feel anything. It's 2023. Who cares? I think I'll react the same way as if she told me she likes someone. I feel nothing, maybe a little curious about whether they have a girlfriend or they're interested. I would be happy that she would feel comfortable sharing it with me. Everybody be fine with it. Yeah, if you want to come out, knock yourself out. I'm just going to be looking at you like, which one is y'all is taking out the trash and stuff? That's what I'm saying. What else we got? What is some of the dumbest reasons people called you gay for? Oh my gosh. I mean, I tease my husband a lot about this. Um, I, my husband's by far not gay, but it's just funny because men literally can't do nothing without being perceived as gay. Like eating a banana and stuff like that. So I'm really bad at those jokes. Or I like to, like, kiss my husband on the cheek a lot. And I know it, like, makes him feel, like, soft. But I'm his wife. But I know I just like messing with him a lot. But somebody said it wasn't random. She was thinking, you no know, agonizing over it every single day until she couldn't take any more. Had to say she went through a whole, am I just unattractive? No, he's gay process. Okay, they got rejected by someone. Declined the advances of a woman in a bar, not people, just her. She called me gay. Being gay is probably the main reason. See, they got called gay because they actually were. For having sex with a dude, I was wearing socks though, so obviously it wasn't actually gay. <laughs> My first girlfriend initially thought I was gay because I looked like her gay friend. Let a buddy crash on my couch for a month or so. He brought a woman over and for some reason they were looking through my cabinet where I kept all my spices, olive oil and such. She noticed that I had balsamic vinegar and asked if I was gay. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to like, if a man has a male roommate, I, I do, I get it. But in today's age with so many men being on a down low, you do kind of got to look at that like, y'all got something going on i mean she saw that balsamic vinegar and she was through how do you ask for sex you just say whip that thing out that's literally all it should be it should be very easy shouldn't even be nothing to it somebody said my wife writes romance novels so i just have to breathe scratching your neck and twi twitching y'all got any of that i usually start caressing my wife a certain way she knows what it means 
yesterday I got out of the shower and was going to say to my wife, either man, I want some you know what, or man, I need this. But what came out was, <laughs> I need, that was crazy. Show off your feathers while doing a nimble dance. The traditional way I contact my attorney who in turn contacts my wife's attorney and things progress as a respectable, at a respectable pace. From there, my wife and I have always enjoyed a certain level of formality in our marriage. It's really the safest way to go if you if you really think about it. All right, y'all, let's get into these story times. This is 29-year-old Adam Johnson, former NHL player who tragically lost his life during a game yesterday after there was a collision with another player and his throat ended up getting slashed by that player's ice skate. He had been playing for the Nottingham Panthers, and this happened during the second period of the Challenge Cup against the Sheffield Steelers. There were about 8,000 people in attendance who witnessed this, and the whole thing was caught on video. And after it happened, he actually stood up, and it was just everywhere. He was first treated on the ice, but then he was transported to the hospital. They called for a medical emergency evacuation and made everybody leave. Further games have been postponed, and his team put on their ex account. The Nottingham Panthers are truly devastated to announce that Adam Johnson has tragically passed away following a freak accident at the game in Sheffield last night. The Panthers would like to send our thoughts and condolences to Adam's family, his partner, and all of his friends at this extremely difficult time. Everyone at the club, including players, staff, management, and ownership, are heartbroken at the news of Adam's passing. Our thoughts are also with the fans and staff of both clubs, especially those who attended or were following the game, who will be devastated following today's news. A lot of people are saying that that it was on purpose as well. Um, interesting. Your name is Gerald? Mm-hmm. And where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Oklahoma, but I live in Maryland, though. Marilyn, how old are you, Gerald? 24, about to be 25. You're 24, for real? Yeah. Would I look, would I look older? You do look older, Gerald. That's fucked up. <laughs> Why everybody keep telling me that, man? Okay, I'm not the only person to ever tell you you look older than 24. Nah, everybody say I look like I'm in my 30s. You look way older than 24. Right, so I got two kids. You got two kids? How old are your kids? Hey, Shit, about to be four, about to be two. Two and four? Yeah, yeah, I guess you can say so. In the next two months, they had to turn to four and two. Are they about the same woman? Nah. Why are you not with the woman that has your two-year-old child? <coughs> I mean, it ain't work out, man. Why are you not with the woman that has your four-year-old child? <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't work out. And what's your zodiac sign? Scorpio. All right, so this is child. <laughs> Now you know you a red flag, Gerald. Nah, I know that ain't gonna stop nothing. No, you know they love red flags. Oh, they, oh women love red flags. What? You can't. If you were square, you ain't gonna get. I'm not about to say something wild. No, say. I want you to talk freely. No, nah, I'm just saying. You know they ain't giving up no pussy to no square. Like you gotta be. I mean you. They got you gotta have a little something wrong with you for them to really fuck with you. You know that. Be for real. If a nigga ain't in his forties or something, man, I'm talking about when you when you in your twenties, thirties, you got you got to have something to do all about you for them to really fuck with you. Because are you saying that women? You said women don't like squares. Nah, they don't. Gerald, what kind of woman are you looking for, babe? I, I, I don't know. I just, I gotta be attracted to you. I ain't gonna lie. To no white woman. I ain't I ain't fucking with no white woman. No Latino women. Uh, Asian, none of that. You know what I mean? Black women only. Or African. Well, that's, I mean, all the same cat, all black. Whatever. So you was at an African woman? Yeah. Also, oh, just black, so black women. Wait, so no white women, did you? Really? For real? I prefer, I prefer an African woman. Like, Tell us why. You said why? Yes. It's a whole lot less you got to deal with. The cultural identities is a whole lot different. They... For real, I'm not going to say all, oh, but a lot of African women, they raised 
and taught how to take care of a man as they grow up. You know what I mean? It's a whole lot. It's a it's a different mindset of independence when it comes to an African woman and an American woman. Like, an African woman could be independent making her own money without shitting on a man. Like, most... Most American women, they just can't. I don't know. It's a bitterness to them and a chip on their shoulder. I still fuck with them, but you know, that's just that's just what it is. That's what you are gonna have to deal with. I got I gotta really be fucking with her to accept two kids. Baby, you got two kids that she has. To it don't matter. I'm a man, though. It don't matter if I had ten. It's gonna be a woman that won me. Let's let's not do that. We know it's dudes. No, no, let's do that. 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 Let's let's spend some time on this. Because, yes, you men always have quantity. I'm going to say that. Because a lot of times, women were always seeking quality, so men just need a body and some wet ass. Or vagina, whatever you want to call it. But not every woman is going to deal with you because some women of quality might say, I don't want a man that got two baby daddies. So there are women that have higher standards that would bypass you. I know. That's what I'm saying. But for the ones that won't bypass me, that's who I'm, that's who I'm, we not worried about the ones that don't, they already out the picture. You know how some people just, a motherfucker call you all throughout the day, and you just, you be like, man, come on. Like, I'm trying, even if I don't, even if I'm not doing nothing, stop fucking calling me. I'm not trying to talk all day. I'm not trying to text all day. Stop with the pet names. I'm too old for that shit. I'm all the all the boot bait, all the sweet shit. I'd be sweet. We could go on dates. I'd treat you. All that, but the constant pressure, you gotta get off my back, man. For real. I've been single for too long. I need space. Like, I can't have... Nah. You don't like so a pet name she can't call you baby? Man, hey, hey, Nick. What? Hey, 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 not, 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 not constant. I don't want to hear that shit all day. Call I me my name. I refer to you as Gerald. Then yeah, call me my name. That's my name. But she <laughs> like she she feeling you, so she like what up, babe? <laughs> Somebody call me my name. This <laughs> shit. The people that come on her dating <laughs> show is out of control. No time for an introduction. Let's go ahead and get into it. Today we're going to be talking about John Cottle. Now John lived with his mom Joanne and his stepfather. His name was Tracy. Tracy's a man's name as well. And they all lived in Monte Vista, Colorado. Now, I'm assuming that he was a little bit of a, a loner and a little weird because the people that went to school with him, those other classmates, they said while he rode the bus, he used to suck his thumb. I mean, thumb sucking is okay for little kids, but he was like middle school. So obviously there was something mental, something going on up in Noggin. Now, he didn't really get along with his parents. So for several years, he actually stayed on and off with his surrogate grandparents. Their name was Cecile and James. Now, around 2008, his relationship with his parents got really, really bad. They became very mentally abusive towards him, and they would punish him for everything. It was kind of like this. Hey, Mom, do you think I can? You can never hold. And this. Hey, Dad, do you think you can teach me how to play catch? Only you don't catch these hands. You talk back to me again, son. But I, but I did. And this. Hey, Mom, look at this picture I drew. How does it look? How does it look? It looks, that's what it looks like. This is what the grandparents, James and Cecile, said that he was going through all this verbal and mental abuse from his parents. So not only were they over punishing him and they were being mentally abusive, they wouldn't even feed him sometimes. Could I have something to eat? No. Could I have something to eat? No. Could I have something to eat? No. Can't you say anything else but no? Try asking again. Can I have something to eat? No. And my boy John was sick of it. Now, in late October 2009, his mom told him to clean up the house. And he was like, I ain't finna clean up this house again. Everybody messed up the house. Why am I the only one doing stuff? And his mom got into another argument with him. And she punished him again, grounded him or whatever they did. And yeah, it was just a bad argument. And it was at this point, he kind of reached his tipping point. So he then went into the family safe and he got two guns. One of those guns was a 22 millimeter pistol. Now, he didn't do anything right away. He held on to it for a couple of days, just trying to see how he felt about the idea. But honestly, he was just he was just waiting for something to pop off. October the 26, 2009, this was two days later, his mom told him to get him a cold pop. And he was like, I'm not doing that. 
it went kind of like this. I don't know. I just don't think this is, like, right for me. I don't want to do it. I want to go home. Like, I can't take the pressure of it. You don't have to think any job interview. She's like, oh, you, finna, you, you not gonna do me like this. And she started yelling at him, right? Because like, you ain't get my damn soda. Now he wouldn't. Finna, I'm not yelling at him. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not laughing at them. I'm not laughing. But he was like, you ain't finna yell at me. I got a gun. So he went and got that uh, 22 caliber pistol, and he lit up. I'm not sure how many rounds he put into her, but he did not stop until he knew she was gone. Now, right around this exact same time, he noticed, he did his number here, and noticed that his dad was pulling into the doggone driveway. So he's freaking out. He's like, oh, oh. So he runs and get in the lunch room and wait for the dad to walk into the house. Now, as expected, when the stepdad walked in and saw his wife dead, he started screaming and yelling, and he ran to his wife to figure out, like, what's going on? What's going on? And when he saw his dad, he was like, 12, I had a 22, that bitch went pop. Now I got a drink, I spot a op, and they go boop. By the way, this is um, Joanne, this is Tracy. But anyway, he noticed that the dad was still breathing, so he shot him again. Then he dragged both of their bodies, put them in their room, and he closed the door. Then he proceeded to get on his computer and play video games and watch movies all night. Just, you know, having a good time. The next morning, he woke up, he ate some breakfast, he took uh, Tracy's truck, his stepdad's truck, drove to school, and acted like he was completely normal. No one suspected a thing. Now, the next day, Joanne's father actually discovered her body inside the house. I'm not exactly sure on how he came to the house or why he came to the house or whatever, but yeah, he came and he found the bodies. He was captured and he pled guilty to manslaughter because he was being abused at home. And with these charges, he had faced 16 to 54 years in prison. At the young age of 14, no less. He was tried as an adult, and on June the 8th, 2011, he was found guilty, and he was sentenced to 22 years in prison. So he was 16 in 2011, so 22 years, he was, what, 38 when he gets out? Sucks. This whole story sucks. Yeah, that's crazy, right? Very. The Hispanic community came after me. Listen, I ain't know George Lopez was canceled. What you mean his wife gave him her kidney and then he cheated on his wife after she gave her the kid gave him the kidney? Like, what do you mean that? What do you mean he was an alcoholic? I, I didn't know about this. I never heard of this shit. I was wondering, I'm like, why is George Lopez like I haven't seen him anywhere and he came back old as fuck. I'm like, what? What happened? Then they said that he he tore like some black woman down at his show. Like what? When did this happen? I ain't know. I didn't know. I hope he's okay. I hope she's okay. He's down a kidney. <sighs> Girl, I'm sorry. <laughs> Man, if I give you a kidney and you cheat on me, I just don't even know. I just don't know. The whole internet is shocked by how much money this guy has to pay in child support every month. Watch this. I'll tell you, but you ain't going to believe it. Me and Alicia have two daughters together, and my payment to her is $31 a month. Me and Kathleen have one daughter, and my total payment to her is $140 a month. Me and Chelsea have one son, and my total payment to her is $14 a month. Me and Alyssa have one son together, and my total payment to her is $24 a month. Me and Brandy have one daughter together, and my total payment to her is $28 a month. Me and Samantha have one daughter together, and my total payment to her is $0. I don't pay her anything. And that comes out to a grand total of $237. And some of you guys be complaining like child support is a lot. That doesn't even pay enough for those kids to get Happy Meals every month. How in the world does he get by with only paying, like, what, like $15 a month per kid? The kids can't even get clothes. That's wild, but he must be buddy-buddy with the court. All right, y'all. It's been real. We'll be back tomorrow for some more hot topics. Bye.